Hi guys, <laughs> uh, my name is Tandwa and I work within uh, the Easy Equities team as a brand rock star. Don't know what that means, neither do I, which is cool. Um, and this is my colleague, Tabs. Hi, I'm Tabs. My full name is Litabo Tabo. You can call me Tabs for short. Um, I am not as financially savvy as the two gentlemen here. I'm just a normal person who invests. I'm not trying to be broke when I'm 60, and that's why I'm investing. So um, this, you know, we'll learn together. I'm sure there's things that I'll learn from you. But if you want the really clever financial answers, they're coming from these two. Uh, what's been awesome getting to know them and working with them is I've learned, I know a lot more about investing than I thought. So if any of you are like me and think you don't know that much, there's more that you do know. You're so modest, but it's fine. <laughs> um, so my name is Lesedia. I work in the brand team with Standard at Easy Equities. And I'm just the guy, the drip king there at Easy Equities. I literally just get to work, look nice. And go home. <laughs> just <jokes. laughs> So basically, we do everything. Everything you see, those emails that you hate from us, that's that guy. <laughs> so uh, without any wasting time, because we only have an hour, so what we thought, because we're easy equities, we like to make it easy, fun, and we love getting you guys involved. So what we're starting with is something called Easy 30 Seconds. Does everyone know what 30 seconds is here? Ah, guys, I need more luck. Some nods. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> I get it. It's five. It's off the work. You guys had a long day. It's all good. But let's try get, you know, like, okay, cool. So for anyone that doesn't know, 30 seconds is a game. You'll get cards. Obviously, it's a lot more complicated than this. But we've got three cards. And we will describe what's on the card without saying any of the words. And you guys have to say back to us, this is what I think it is. So if I said um, where we are today, someone would try. Jay-Z, correct. And then we move on to the next one, and we have 30 seconds in which to get them all. What can we win? <laughs> <A> high five? <laughs> so you can get a 50 rand voucher to invest in the Back the Flag campaign that we're running. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, now it's now, good, right? Okay, cool. awesome. <laughs> awesome, love it. So we just need a moderator of sorts, and I think I'm just going to give it to the madam here. Our 30-second moderator. Cool. And how are we going to start, guys? All right. So, so I, think, I think the crowd should choose who starts. I think okay. ladies go first. So. Yeah. Wow. Ladies first. You go, we go. are modern up in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. If we can get five, do I get prizes? No. To <laughs> no. It's for them. It's for the people. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. And I'm ready. Yeah. The uh, Easy Equities Rewards Program. Right. Yes. Um, the thing that you can invest in, it's managed. It's not a basket. No? Bundle. Bundle yes, correct. Um, people who sit between you, the investor, and the place, the markets. Uh, the full name. Yes. Um, the markets are considered to do this. They go um, up and down. Yes. <laughs> and the thing, the thing that you, um, when you, when your thing finishes, when you, when your investments run out and you get the money back. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> First time, 30 seconds! <laughs> nice. Well done! Good job! Beat that, Jim! Is it? Show people first. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, I am not ready, but okay, let's go. Ready? Yeah. Ready. <laughs> cool. Um, so it's when you have many assets and different types of. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, Cetrix makes these. What products are they? ETFs. Say the full thing. Exchange. The campaign that we're running to, in support of the South African. Oh, uh, this company makes ETFs. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, um, you pay a tax of this kind. Um, it's when you sell and buy. Yeah. That's the one. Thank yes, you. Sir. Done. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. The pressure is Look on. Look at the Arsenal supporters kicking butt. Hey, 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 hey. We're not talking about soccer here. It's a sad time for United, please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Yes. Somebody go down. Okay, you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Okay, Easy just launched this. It's it tracks the it tracks uh, cryptocurrencies. DCX. Nice. Um, we have a ZAR account. We have a USD account. Then we have. TFS. TFS. Okay, the full the full name. Okay. Um, when you transfer your rands to dollars, it's called. 
No, it's there, there you go. But what do we call? Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, <laughs> each month. Um, so when you want, instead of a debit order, we have something called. It goes into your the same the same this. Stop. Sa this. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, recurring one investments. Nil. One nil. <laughs> All right, sweet. Cool. Guys, that was really awesome. Thank you. <laughs> So, yeah, we're going to sit down now. Yeah. My gosh. Okay. I'm just going to get our program. Um, so, we wanted to just understand as well, um, as the audience, what did you guys expect in this conversation? Um, this is just a sort of icebreaker as well, just like the 30 seconds game. And we also just want to gauge sort of how deep we can go in and how deep we're probably not going to go. Uh, so, just if we can pass it around, pass the mic to the audience, if someone has can share with us what they kind of expected from <coughs> the three of us. Why are you here? What do you like, Anybody? Gentlemen I'll start. Hot, hot, hot tips. Hot tips? Hot tips. What to buy? Stuff that's going to go up a whole lot by so, Tuesday. So before we came here, our, le our legal eagle told us not to give advice, and that's we're not going to do that because we're not financial advisors. But we can tell you the stuff that we love. Yeah. Yeah. Is there someone here? So it's hot. Um, hello, uh, my name is Sanele. Hi, Sanele. Hi. And okay, <laughs> I think we have a good question. The reason why I'm here more than anything, um, I like what you guys are doing and thanks for introducing and taking care of our accounts. Um, the reason why I'm here, I just want to network, get to know everyone here and maybe just share what I understand and maybe also learn from everyone from here. So more than anything, I just want to take from everyone and use that hopefully uh, into my investing. Yeah. So, and that's the funny part is we also actually came here to learn from you guys. Mm. Uh, as much as we're going to introduce things, we're going to be doing a lot of asking the audience questions because as millennials, we found that we have a lot of learning we actually need to do as well. Even though we're part of the, the brand team of uh, an online stockbroker, there's so much to understand and so much to learn. And the minds in here are so diverse. So we're also here to learn as much as we are just to chat. Anybody else? I'm Ashley. Um, I think I opened an account by mistake. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, uh, yeah, many, many months ago. Uh, and then I just happened this morning to be going through my emails and I got an invitation to be here. So um, I have no idea what is going on here. <laughs> but, uh, I can tell you I've set aside billable hours to be here. Hopefully it's uh, going to it's... mean something. <laughs> so, can, I, to win can I get a gauge? Um, just pop a hand if you would call yourself maybe like an entry level person, an entry level understanding of investing. Okay. Okay. A few. Um, if you'd say you're like you're okay, you could hold your own in a conversation here at the JSE. Maybe you won't be able to predict stuff, but you'd be okay. So sort of medium understanding of investing. I'm Warren Buffett. <laughs> well, so that's my next question: is who's, who's a, who feels like they could be Warren Buffett? Like, ask me anything about investing. I got this. Okay, cool. So we have a nice mix. Simon, put his hand up. Are you Warren Buffett? Yeah. So. Oh, <laughs> okay, awesome, great. So we're not sending microphones to you guys. <laughs> so yeah, so I think we'll we'll pitch it sort of that way. I mean, I, I sorry, I'm stop touching the mic. Um, I was quite clear about where I stand. I'm like a lot of you, um, entry level, and I just I want to be clear that like investing, I know sometimes can be super scary, and there's like crazy terms, ETFs, and mutual funds and unit trusts and your head kind of starts to spin and what i've really enjoyed about easy and investing with easy and and knowing the easy team is that it's not that complicated um it's very easy to ask a question <laughs> very easy <laughs> to ask a question um and i think a lot of us know a lot more than we think we do um, you sit and you think, Flip, I don't know. But what I love about the easy platform is when you're using it, you can even invest by businesses that you know. So maybe you don't understand like what these hot businesses are and what their shares are going to do. But you do know brands. You recognize a Clicks, a Dischem, Woolworths, etc. And those are brands that you do know and understand. And if you're comfortable putting your money into that, easy allows you to do that. And you even get them in um, categories. 
So you can choose lifestyle or fashion or whatever. And it just makes it a little bit easier because now it's speaking a language you understand. It's brands that you recognize and you think, yeah, I, I want to invest in those kind of brands. Yeah. Um, and in terms of <clears throat> hot tips, I usually get a lot of my hot tips from Simon Brown, just one lab team. So for you, for Christia to say she's a beginner, I'm just like, nah, that's not true. She's not a beginner. <laughs> um, but so the thing is, um, I'm very... Where I usually allocate a lot of my funds is in a tax-free savings account because I'm young and I found that I need to not pay as much tax as possible. So in a tax-free environment, you're allowed to do that. And I feel that ETFs kind of take away the pressure of you know, studying the markets and always being in tune. And it gives me the opportunity to give an asset manager all of the responsibility. And also I have some leeway in terms of what to, what kind of sectors I'm looking at and what kind of ETF themes or what kind of themes that I'm interested in. Um, and I found that that's best for me because I'm diversified already. And um, yeah, because I just, I found that investing in stocks individually, it's quite a lot of pressure. Um, you need a lot of insights, you know. So with things like that, I tend to allocate a lot of my as assets to ETFs in what is, I think the core shares team introduced this to us, and that's called the core satellite strategy, where you allocate a lot of your, your assets to an ETF, and then you maybe, let's say, call it a 75%, and the other 25%, you allocate it to single stocks, and that way you're kind of lowering your risk and exposure. So that's personally my, so my hard tip about what to buy, I... ETFs uh, and international ETFs, really, um, in this current economy in South Africa, um, internationally themed ETFs are my favorite right now. So that's where I'm at. Your what? personal favorite right now? Uh, my personal favorite is the it's Signia's Japan. What do they call it? The full name? The Japanese ETF. Mm, mm, Warren mm, Buffett. Mm, mm, mm. I told you guys. <laughs> Um, that's that's my favorite one right now. It's returned the most for me. Um, it's at eleven percent on my portfolio right now, so that's that's why I like it. It's been like three, four months since buying it. You yourself? Well, well, a lot of hot tips I use is I know you guys know him. He's he goes by the name Barry Dumas, and he's our in-house market researcher. So what he does, he does a lot of research for us, and he literally tells you what's the beef with a stock. So for instance, this week he did. Uh, under Armour, and he tells you exactly what's happening at Under Armour so you guys don't have to do all the legwork. And you know with Easy, we like to make things easy for you. It's in our name, and we'll always make sure that you as investors got everything that you need. And if you don't, then you can call us up and literally hit us up on Twitter, and we're always there for you. Mm -hmm. So my thing is always Barry Dumas, a podcast. It will be Twitter. And, I mean, we do it very differently compared to Simon Brown. You probably, like, it's a newspaper and we out here on Twitter and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So we're doing it the millennial way and we'll continue doing it that way. Yeah. And I believe in investing. There's no right or wrong. Just keep learning and never stop. So that's my tip. <laughs> nah, dance is my thing. <laughs> Read the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi. My name is What's Joel. Up? I want to ask uh, all three of you, without no filter, with no prejudice, um, what like. what's your five-year plan in terms of your Easy Equities account? Okay. Mm. Do you want to start? So, <laughs> I know what my plan is. Without, uh, <laughs> actually, so, no pressure about the So for me, just, um, just yeah. when, I, when I started investing, I did it because my parents told me I had to. Um, seriously, I, I got a job, my first job, and they were like, cool, you need to start investing. I was like, nah, <laughs> I'm trying to get lit. I'm trying to travel. <laughs> like, I've got things I'd rather do with my money. And um, I was living at home and my parents forced a financial planner onto me. And he arrived one night at the house and was like, cool, let's talk about <laughs> life insurance, investments, etc." And so I started that. And in that process, I started reading up about investing and how does this thing work? Because in my mind, you see a Warren Buffett who's a big time investor. So I'm like, oh, cool. Homie invested for a year and then became a billionaire. And in my reading and understanding, I realized that this is not going to be something that's going to happen overnight. And so 
any of my investments I look at long term, not five years, 10 years. Five years would be great, but in my mind, I only have the intention of taking anything out after 10 years. So if I get any dividends that I can transfer or whatever, then I'll reinvest those. But I don't, I don't touch the money. I don't take it and, and spend it and have a hot Saturday night, you know, <laughs> popping bottles. I, for me, it's, it's not five years, it's 10 years. Okay. Uh, and myself, I'd say I have, uh, so right now I'm in that risky phase of my investments. So I'm a poor financial planner. So that means I rather, and it's bad. I invest what I have left, which is not the good thing. I know guys, you're supposed <laughs> to plan it and then da, da, da. but I, um, take what I have left out of everything, out of the bills and stuff. Um, and I invest that. And what I do is I'm very risk, not pro, not averse. What's the opposite of averse? Risk, risk tolerant. Yeah. yeah. So I take a lot of risks. So you're aggressive. I'm aggressive. So yeah. that's, that's my five year plan. And hopefully by the end of that five year plan, I'll stop investing in such high risk things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'll focus more on ETFs as I, as I, as I would want to. Um, so my five year plan is, is more, yeah, it's, it's more being open to risk and learning about the markets than anything. Mm -hmm. So it's a fluid five year plan and the word plan is where, yeah, it's kind of not really. So for me, it's, it's kind of a hard one to answer because being young and black is completely different. You don't have so much leeway in terms of your own finances and your own salary. So what I do is that obviously I put aside money at the beginning of the month. And then I obviously put it into my tax free savings account because when I go home, I've got something called black tax. You know? mm -hmm. So I'm not about to pay tax on my investments and pay tax at home. So my plan is my TFSA, get to the limit probably hopefully my lifetime limit and i'll take it from the when i get there so literally i am running away from sars and black Lives. that's my <laughs> you just plan. said that publicly <laughs> i don't know this man SARS. i pay my taxes <laughs> yeah. so but but at the end of the day you have to be really candid about your investments you yeah. need to you need to be able to say you know what i don't have money or i do have money yeah. or i don't like paying tax and I don't think anyone does. I think you always have to be candid. You must tell yourself the truth, just like in life. Like That's I can't true. say, oh no, man, you know, I'm just going to buy Capitec. <laughs> just, ooh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna, no, be candid. I don't have, I don't have enough to buy Capitec shares. Mm. So let me look at something else. Mm. So that's my and opinion. I think that's one of the things I really like about the easy platform is you can invest any amount of money, um, which makes it a little bit easier. Because I also was thinking these big time investors are in investing like 100K and like huge amounts of money. And I mean, in my lifetime, I don't know if I'm going to be looking at 100,000 Rand that's just chilling for me to invest and hope I get a million after a few years. And so it's really great that there's small amounts that I can invest that I can afford, whether it's at the beginning of the month and I've budgeted for it, or if it's at the end of the month and whatever's left. But there's whatever you have to work with, you can work with that. And ideally, if your money makes money babies, then that's great. And if it's a small amount, it's a small baby. And one day, maybe that small baby will be a nice big adult that you can retire on. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what I really like. I think I also didn't answer the question around like tips. So I think hot tips for me is also I'm on the socials all the time. I follow these guys because um, they share some really nice tips um, and the easy account. And there's a book that I read or have read and I'm rereading. I think I brought it with me. It was recommended by Warren Buffett, but it's um, The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. It's an old book. It's from like the 70s. Um, no, like it really is. <laughs> but um, what I like about it is that because it was recommended by Warren Buffett and the way he recommends it is he says this book shaped a lot of how he thinks about investing. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm trying to think like Warren Buffett around investing, right? Yeah. Um, and this version that I've got is really fat because it has explanations, <laughs> which is really helpful for me. So there's terms that they'll use that because I'm not super savvy, 
there's some terms that I don't understand. And so the book will then give you an explanation at the bottom. And then at the end of the chapter, it'll be like, right, just to clarify, this is what we discussed in this chapter. This is what Benjamin Graham was saying. And so you feel like, oh, cool, I've really, I've really got it. I think people who are super investment savvy will read the normal version, which is much thinner. Um, but this I found is, is really helpful. Um, and just asking people. I think if you just have conversations and you ask what kind of investments are you looking at, um, podcasts are huge for me. Um, there's one podcast I listened to that actually gave a shout out to Easy Equities. That was like, <laughs> but um, I think that really helps. If you just listen to the conversations um, that people are having and smart people about investing, then you pick up on a lot of stuff. Yeah, and I think the social media age has made it so easy to oh, yeah. access information. And for me, that's <clears throat> my favorite channel. I think, um, for instance, I follow Simon Brown, just one lap. <laughs> um, and I follow um, Warren Ingram, um, Bruce Whitfield, yeah, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of the finance guys. And, and just to have that conversation and to or not even have the conversation, just to witness it and watch it and, and pick up on the little things from the, on the conversations that happen online. And also just from news breaking. I mean, if mm. a lot of people found out about Steinhoff a bit, not a lot of people, actually a lot with Steinhoff, what is unique about it, it wasn't like a lot of the things that had happened before where a share tanks and then you start to ask and then you have to wait for the news to for SABC to play the cycle over. And, you know, mm. you found out on Monday morning when it broke on Sunday, I believe that the CEO had quit. If I'm not mistaken. Um, so, or you found out on Sunday and then the markets reacted on Monday. But the point is, is that I think staying online and as much as of a toxic space, space social media gets as a rep, mm. there's a lot of good things and nuggets you can find in it. For sure. I just want to clarify. Um, does that mean that if something happens on the weekend, the markets will only react on the Monday? So, well, yeah. I mean, as you see the share price, so, so if yeah. I if I was investing in something and something happened, you know, the CEO quit yeah. on the Saturday, could I quickly move my investments knowing something was going to happen on Monday? I don't know if that depends on broker to broker, actually. Okay. But wow. with, with, with us, you'll just see hey, a day. <laughs> <laughs> in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening. I'm Cabello. So I've been hearing you guys mentioning uh the age of information and uh, being on shows, socials and whatnot. Mm. How important do you think it is to have financial advisors for many millions? Because mm. most of us are doubt to be about that life. Mm. Because paying people to, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, give you advice when you think that the information is out there and you can get it for yourself. Mm. I'd just like to know your opinion on it. So my well, opinion, not just you guys, because I'm seeing some yeah. older people around here. If they have any advice as to what the benefit of that would be as well. Well, just to start off with, I'm not giving advice, but <laughs> for me, I think it's, it's it's a very good thing to have a financial advisor because you can't come to Easy Equities and say, um, "I need life cover, I need income protection, I need mm. disability cover." So it's That's it's true. two different things, but they work very much hand in hand because you need to have a holistic plan when it comes to financial planning. So that's my thing. Yes, I'll have a financial planner, but when it comes to my investments, I will ask for his guidance, but doesn't necessarily mean that I will go with what he's saying. I will also do my oh, own she. research. Oh, she's sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, ladies. Um, him or she. And literally, I, at the end of the day, you have to be financially literate you can't just sit there and say i've got a financial advisor yeah but the thing is about that a lot of people don't have that trust fund to go and get a financial but it's advisor. not you, you know it's not even about a trust fund you know the only time a financial advisor gets very expensive is when they tell you okay please sign on that mm. that quote and then they make you sign all those quotes 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 and then they said record of, record of advice and you sign it yeah. so you'll see they'll come with you uh it's like 250 life cover then 500 retirement but the nice thing with easy is that we have a retirement annuity, so you can tell them, okay, do you make your That's yeah, yeah. Then with life cover, when you start accumulating debt and you've got liability and you've got assets, it's it's a good thing to have. And if you have a family, mm. so it's a good thing to have, you know. Mm. So with saying that, financial advisors, not all of them are expensive because some of them just come out for free. And it only gets expensive once you sign on because you have to pay them fees and commission and so mm. forth. So, yeah, that's my take on it. I think it's also like you need to decide for yourself, right? If you feel like I got this, I don't need a financial advisor and you feel like you've got enough access to information, then don't get one. 
But if you're starting out and you're like, flip, I don't understand any of the stuff. I don't know what an ETF is. I like, I don't understand at all. And I would really value having someone who does know the stuff, explain it to me. Then maybe you sign up with the financial advisor for a short time. I mean, you can fire them. You're not like stuck with that person forever. You no, know? you can't fire them. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, um, so as a financial advisor, I think, <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> about to go down. <laughs> Be careful, he's getting think, business cards up there. <laughs> it's, it's definitely important that you take my business card. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they all like this. <laughs> so I think it's, um, what happens is if you're an individual who feels like they are savvy with finances, it's it's important that even though you feel that you are savvy, you still see a financial advisor. I think like you mentioned, it's it's free to see a financial advisor. And because they are close to being a doctor in terms of sort of like uh, giving you some of the recommendations, that would actually give you a bit of insight into in your plan, what could you have easily overlooked, right? Mm. So when, at, at, at most, when I meet some clients, especially if they are young, what we go through, we go through a process of learning first before you actually sign up. Obviously, the things that are important, like your risk um, coverage, that usually I would tell you that you would need to actually take as soon as you can. But then with investments, retirement, for me, we approach it differently in the sense that I would ask you, what did you major in in school if you went to school? In the market, in, with the story of Steinhoff, what did you feel happened? From, from you telling me those stories would usually give me an idea of whether I feel you should open an investment account with easy equities or maybe have hold shares and things like that. So most clients, because they don't have as much time on their hands, I would say the unit trust is necessary for you because you can't afford to actually take mm, a risk that trust. you that you <laughs> <laughs> see that that's the way the conversation. <laughs> but but remember if 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 I find a normal man on the street, they have zero background of finances. They they would definitely need someone managing their money. Unless if they tell me that they can. Yeah. And indeed, I can see that they can. And, and with most of my clients, especially those that are young, we actually do have a strategy where they invest on their own as well as a strategy where they have funds in, in, in a managed portfolio. And, and that bridges the gap of um, how much do you know and what can you take risk on versus, OK, I, I don't know as much. I, I may lose money here. So, so the, the, the important thing is usually education. And so far, I think we are getting there, but some some are, are, are sort of like getting there. But, but we we'll get there. How many folks have a financial advisor? How many people have okay. a robo advisor? Robo advisor. So the nice thing about easy equities is like we literally come to to disrupt everything, and that's that's literally our motto. And even in the brand team, how are we going to mess up the economy right now? Okay, so basically, in a good way, <laughs> in a very good way. Um, so we have a robo advisor called Murphy, and literally, it it makes everything simple for you. So if you're scared to see a financial advisor, you can literally get a Murphy account and link it to your Easy Equities account. So all you have to do is set goals, and once you set your goals, it's literally going to tell you how much you need to put in for how long, and at what what, and then you do a risk profile, and it tells you your risk uh, appetite. And once you get that, then you're good to go. So that's the nice thing about easy. So we try make it very easy. I don't want to say that word, but I guess we do. Um, it's like a one-stop shop. It's do it yourself, keep learning. And we always give you guys material to always know what's going on. Like if you want to find out more about Murphy, um, you can speak to Lucas over here in France. He's like a whiz at Murphy. Um, you can speak to Stanz or myself. And it's, it's really very simple. It's just like the easy equities platform. It's called Easy Advisor, so it's um, it's easy as well. So cool. Yeah. Um, just come in. Uh, you have put the answers. Yeah, please. Get that on. Okay. Um, do you listen to the Fat Wallet Show? I do. Okay. Do you have a phone with you? Google the Fat Wallet Show. 
<laughs> you ask for millennial advice. Yeah. I think go through that and then see how you feel, see how you react, engage with it. Um it should be enough. Right? If it's not then get Sam's book, manage your money like a is it bleeped? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a boss. <laughs> right. Yeah, read that and then um that's for you though, right? And then the average guy in the street I'd say start with a financial advisor but don't think about the money think about your finances think about this is someone that can guide me through what I'm about to, what I'm about to do so don't say to them I want to get rich in 10 years 5 years or not start at the end I'm going to die and let's work backwards to where I am now and then you initially you you maximizing the hour that you're going to be paying for right and then keep track of what are the components that they're speaking about you're going to hear the words risk you're going to hear the words inflation you're going to hear all those words that aren't necessarily tied to a particular instrument they will drop off unit trust here and there yeah. and you won't know it at the time that they said that this is a product and not um um um, um a concept for example right but essentially it's going to come down to about five concepts that you will pick up on the fed wallet shows compounding its interest its assets its investments its liabilities and inflation right and that's all the things that are there to work with and until you can twist them whichever way it is keep on engaging in the community keep on engaging with guys on twitter um guys on the wireless bruce whitfield keep on listening and then at some point you'll see you'll get very confident in making your own decisions and what not um a very good financial advisor is worth all the money that you can that you've got but then you also can have very bad experiences with financial advisors that just really just take you off course forever yeah so i think in terms of financial advisor for for a while don't think about it as don't think about the money side of it it's going to cost you a bit but then after a while you'll start to find your way and then you'll feel you'll feel comfortable doing everything and then you'll see where you need a financial advisor. Mm. Yeah. So James Brilliant. um why do we invest? I, I mean I'll start. Um as I said I started investing because I had to, but I continue to invest because I don't want to be broke. I'm like terrified of needing to retire and not being able to retire because I've got expenses and that kind of stuff. And so for me I I am investing long term. I would like to be able to afford certain things in the future. Um if I could travel for the rest of my life that would be great. So for me investing is I'm trying to set myself up for the future but also for when I have kids that um my kids don't have to start at the bottom that there's some kind of family wealth or family like just a stepping stone because and especially like as a black person in this world sometimes you just need a hand and your parents love you and want to give you that hand but they just cannot and i would really love to be able that when i have kids my kids know i have at least a little something to fall back on um that if they want to go to a harvard and they're super smart i don't want to look and say look you know we can't afford it even though harvard is the best place for you And so for me the most important thing is that I can set up the next generation so that in 5 generations 10 generations money is not a problem that we're able to focus on building a better world instead of just trying to live day to day you guys for me um when i retire i'd like to go to bali france um italy back to bali but um no in all seriousness i think it, it's it actually It stems from the same thing as as Tabo as Tabo it as Tabo What's my name Sandra? Yeah Tabo Tabo right. <laughs> um so it's the same thing is that I don't want to leave um my kids with nothing should I decide to have them. Um and and she actually touched on all the points and what motivates that it said you know growing up you know we had to live paycheck to paycheck and then, you know just manage just manage and then you know what I mean. Um so 
and then Nest Fast, which I still haven't paid back. Um, <laughs> so with, <laughs> with me in my in my case, like I want to be able to have my kids do the same, have freedom. I think freedom mm-hmm. is is not feeling constrained in any way, especially financially. So so I think it's the same. Pretty much the same. So I invest. Yeah, I mean all of our answers are going to be the same. <laughs> Um, another reason why I invest. Yes. Where are we going? We were guy. Is that she? <laughs> what? Alexa. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, another reason why I invest is because I like nice things. Mm, <laughs> I like nice things. I like, <laughs> I like looking good. And another reason is because I'm black and I'm probably going to marry a black woman. What's wrong with I, black women? No, there's nothing no, wrong nothing with black women at wrong. all. Why? I'm not attacking you. I have to pay Lobola and there's just... <laughs> hey, it's worth it. Hey, I didn't say it's not worth it. That's why I'm saving for it because it's worth it. You yeah. Know? So there's a lot of things that I look at growing up that I didn't look at when I was young. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what's helped me learn, learn my why in investing. I lost my dad at a very young age. So it made me realize that Things aren't always guaranteed. You won't, doesn't mean you have money today, you'll have money tomorrow. Yeah. So why not invest it so that money grows for you and works for you and later on in life, you can actually say, wow, I've got more than 10,000. I initially put 10,000, but now I've got 11, 12. And that extra 2,000 is going to do a hell of a lot difference. Mm-hmm. So that's my why. Yeah. And- yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, I just to say thank you very much for your presentation and just for me, and I think I'm in this wall. I'm the only person that brought three kids uh, for the really? same reason that uh, hey, uh, the intention is that I want them to hear from the horse's mouth, right? Because I've been coming to GSC, but I've never invested. I've never, I mean, even the TFSA when they started here many years ago, I never invested, which is the mistake that I've done in my life, right? Then now, when I'm here with my kids, Right, which is a 20 year old, 18 year old, and a 10 year old. <laughs> now, your yeah, parents will expose <laughs> so you. Very, fine, very. Right, parents will expose the, you. Absolutely. <laughs> then, now, what I like to hear from you guys, I want them before they, when they leave this hall today, to know what is the best thing that you need to do for their lives when it comes to investment. The tips that they, when they leave this hall today, to say when dad took us into that meeting. We learn only one or, two or five things or three things mm. about investment. Right. So, that so my one thing is start early. Mm. Because if you think of investments as a long-term thing, they need time to grow. So if you're only going to start investing when you're 40 and you hope to retire at 50, you're much better off starting at 18 and then trying to retire at 40. So start early and give it time to grow. Yeah. Uh, and my tip would be, Stick to the plan. Uh, don't do what I do, which is just to save until the, or to invest what you have in the end. Um, have that be, of course, pay all your bills and stuff, but make sure then after that, the next step is to have a nest egg to work with. Mm. Um, stick to a plan because that discipline is going to get you way further than, yeah, before. Mm. Okay. My tip to you guys is invest for the things that you love. So yours might be, I see you have a son over there, it might be soccer. And you want you might want the best boots out there. The best boots out there are like 3,000 rand. That is going to say, I, my son, I don't have that 3,000. What are you going to do? You're going to pull out your investment and actually pay for those boots. And it's going to mean so much more to you. And you're going to take care of them. My sister on the side, you might want to get the best dress, the best heels, your a new wig or weave, whatever. Mm. But it's gonna you're going to take care of that thing much more than if someone else bought it for you. And I know that because I saved up to buy my first car. And every single time my friends might want to eat in it, I'll be like, ah. Mm. <laughs> not happening. Guys, he's not joking. I've like, been in that car. <laughs> so, and that's the thing. Like when, some, when you've worked hard for something and you, it's your own money, it yeah. means so much more. Yeah. So I say start investing now. The earlier you start, the better. Mm. And achieve those little goals. Start young. It might be just to go out with your friends at the end of the month, but start now. Just mm-hmm. that extra yeah. 50 that you have, throw it into an easy equities account. It's really simple to invest. It's very cheap and there's no high fees. And the thing is, after doing that, saving for something that you can consume straight after, 
you will bleed that into your other things and actually mm-hmm. start investing and saving for mm-hmm. your retirement. So that's just to like essentially get you started and into the the practice of investing for the bigger picture. And I think it's easier because you're like, this is what I want. This is my goal. And so you, it's easy to say, no, guys, I can't go out this weekend because I was going to blow a whole bunch of (laughs) But I think it's easier to say to yourself, actually, this is my big goal. And Mm. so rather than spending the money getting lit on a Saturday, I'd rather put that money into an investment. I can see some hands. Yeah, my my tip Mm. is if you can, never get into debt. Yeah. Yeah. That's That's, a big one, actually. There's a lady here. Oh, Esther. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, Esther here. Um, I think for me it's about building habits. Um, I think you look at um, some of the TV programs, like I blew it, where someone gets a lump sum of money, Mm. and a few years later they're they're worse off than they were with the money that they got. Mm. And I think that the key things I've learned from that is habits. Build habits. Get into the habit of taking care of money. I mean, for me, there'll always be that nice shoe that I want, but I won't buy it because I know what the long-term goal is. I know that I'm building habits. So should I get a million, I'll know immediately that for me, for example, I save 30 to 50% of my of, of whatever extra money I get. Wow. And I make sure whenever I get... <laughs> no, that's impressive. So that's not my normal salary, sorry. That's just, let's say, stock fell money. I get stock fell money. I make sure 30 to 40% of it or 30 to 50% of it immediately, I don't touch it. It just goes straight to investing. Sure. And that's a habit I've built over the last few years to say it's it's a habit. Whatever money I get, mm. I don't spend. It's it's for the long term. Mm. So it's building the habit, bu- getting into building the habit. Whatever you want, get into the habit of, of saving something and just not eating everything. Mm. Uh, so why would I choose Easy Equities over any other platform? I can answer. I mean, I'd say independent because I I, I don't work for Easy. The only way they pay me is that <laughs> my shares are getting dividends. Um, I for me the reason I choose to invest with Easy is because it is easy. Um, when I when I discovered Easy, they were just starting out, and I, I I felt like I knew absolutely nothing about investing. And when I looked at it, I thought, okay, this is going to do a lot of it for me. And the baskets and bundles were like a dream. It was like somebody went and put together a whole bunch of shares for me, and all I had to do was go, cool, I'm choosing this one, and then I'll see what happens. And so I've enjoyed using it because it's been so simple for me. Um, I like pictures. <laughs> it's lots of <laughs> pictures, which makes it easier to navigate. Um, and so for me, it's simple. I also think it's more affordable. Like the fees are like, mm-hmm. yeah, they're ridiculous. I think it's like 50 cents or something. I was looking last night at one of mm-hmm. my, um, like a breakdown and it was like 50 cents on fees. And I'm like, well, I, <laughs> I got 50 cents. <laughs> it's cheppies. So, um, <laughs> well, TPC is a it's not like, expensive yeah, now. Yeah. Not right, yeah. Inflation. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so for me, I invest with Easy because it's simple, it suits me, and I don't ever feel dumb. Um, it's my money. I don't want to feel stupid when I'm asking a question. I don't want someone to look at me like I'm asking a dumb question. This is money I worked hard for, and I'm going to invest it, and I want to know exactly what's happening with it. And I feel like... I have that. And if I get really stuck, I can tweet them. I can phone someone. And I'm like, guys, I'm so confused. Can someone help me? And I do get help. So that's why I invest with Easy. So if I may jump in, I think the cool thing about Easy is, yes, it's like very um, low cost um, and cool to navigate and stuff. And I mean, the faces behind the brand are cool people. (laughs) And modest. And modest. (laughs) So, um, but the thing about that is there's a spectrum of products that you can get. We cater to the DIY investor. If you want to do it yourself and go at it, you've got DIY shares, you just buy shares yourself. And then we go towards the more um, managed things like ETFs and stuff in in your TFSA account, we've got that. And then managed portfolios where an asset manager actually make create a portfolio and it's and multiple according to your own risk uh, appetite, um, down to what he had referred to before, Murphy, which is you just know you have a goal, you wanna go on a vacation and you can fund it and you just need to tell it um, 
what that what Jola. that you are Jola and that you <laughs> that you have <laughs> and how much uh, income disposable income you have and things like that and determine your risk score and that does it for you like it draws the money for you so it's a wide spectrum of products that cater to on one platform which is I think pretty cool. Mm. So why I would say go with easy equities is we have something that most people don't have and it's something called fractional sharing. Right? Share rights. Share, Share rights. Yeah. Sorry, geez, dude. Um, and it's literally, if I can break it down for you, it's literally a company sells a share at a certain price. And sometimes you don't have that amount. So what we do is that we break up that, that price into some, like a cake and you can take a slice of that cake. You don't have to buy the entire share because you don't have the entire sum. But with, with easy equities, you can buy into that share and still gain profits from having that a share into that company. And that's my thing. It's that it's really cost effective. Mm. Wow. Hey guys. Yeah, well. Okay. <laughs> I was about to give up. <laughs> so um, my question to you guys is, I mean, how do you distinguish between saving and investing? Because, for example, if you're saying invest and then take the money out and buy shoes, you've disinvested. Yes. Mm. So how, I mean, do you guys, you say you don't give advice. Hey. No, I, I'm really. very happy to tell but you how, how do I you, do it. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. but how do you uh, communicate that to, 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 to yeah. So can, can I jump in on that one? Um, a great article posted by uh, Christia uh, about investing and saving, and it's about how they're actually like twins. Um, so they work in tandem with one another, but they have slight differences between the two. Um, so you can't have, well, I guess with twins, you can't have one without the other. But with, in, with investing, um, it's sort of you're using that money to, there's a slight more, there's more risk to it. It's the edgier twin. Whereas saving is the more safe twin where you know you can get a specific percent return after inflation or no return on inflation after inflation. Um, but with that, um, yeah, I'd pretty much say that they're almost the same thing. They're like twins. They're not, they're almost the same thing. They're not the same thing, but they're twins. Like they're fraternal twins. Fraternal they don't look twins. the same. Yeah. I, I would, I would say that if you look at saving as money that you have, if you need to use it now and you mm. look at investing as money for the future. And so if, I mean, using simple numbers, if you had a hundred rand and if you could, you only wanted to split it two ways, then you would maybe say 50 rand I put aside for now, if I do want to buy shoes or if I'm short on rent or if whatever, I dip into this 50 rand, but that 50 rand doesn't get touched. And so I think mm. it being twin, them being twins means that you still have that money available if you're desperate for it and you have the money that's setting you up for the future. And I think a lot of us forget that like there is a future and especially being young and fun, like, mm -hmm. yeah, you, we can be irresponsible. I've been irresponsible. I've done some dumb stuff with my money. And at least in my brain, I know that I'm saving some of it and I'm investing some of it and I'm less likely to use the money I'm investing. So I keep savings. And I mean, advice I heard is that you should try and keep, um, I think it's about three to six months of your expenses in savings so that if something were to happen, you're good for three to six months. And so when I'm saving, I look at it and I say, cool, this is how much I have available to spend, this much I'm putting into savings, this much I'm putting into investments. And the investments are not available, but the savings, if I need it, if I want the shoes, if I'm going to the Maxwell concert, which was amazing, <laughs> <laughs> then I use it from there. Hi guys, um, first and foremost, um, thanks for the session. It's been really great. Um, so um, one of the questions that I wanted to ask, um, oh, by the way, let's have with that book that you're reading, The Intelligent Investor. It's probably one of the best books I've read. It's a really great book. My guy, um, these guys are laughing at me because it's a book from the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a really brilliant book. Um, it's probably the only book you'll need to read when it comes to investing. Um, my question <laughs> is, a bit more t is a bit more technical in the sense that um, looking at what's happening in the markets right now, um, internationally, um, mm. you know, with um, the S and P reaching all-time records, and um, you know, international Thanks. stocks being at all-time highs, then you contrast that to South Africa, which is, um, you know, at all-time lows, basically not all-time lows, but it's been pretty much flat for the mm -hmm. past couple of years. You know, um, in terms of where to invest. Um, especially considering that one would say that there's more value when prices are low 
and you contrast that to America where prices are high, um, where would you guys say is the more ideal place to invest internationally or locally? And it's a question that I'm opening up to the guys on the floor. Um, Simon as well, I know you've got insights. So, yeah. <laughs> so my key insight is that book comes from the 40s. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in terms of where to invest right now, um, look, I've heard insights from analysts saying that actually what the S&P is doing right now is, is based on very shallow there's not much depth in their market. That's that it's high because of some superfluous thing. I didn't really go in depth into it, but um, and then I see the potential in investing while things are low in the country at the same time. But do we have the patience for um, waiting it out? And do we know what's going to happen next? I mean, mm. you can invest in local stocks, but there's or even international stocks, and there's a lot of things that go wrong. Yeah, Scandals, Trump. Steinoff. Trump. Trump, Trump seems to be, I don't know about Trump, but, Trump but um, you know, from your Steinhaus to EOH and a lot of things are coming out in the markets, but the fact that the economy is bad right now, plus you get all of these news, this news coming out in the in local markets, it doesn't help anything. Um, so I would just say diversify. Why not do both? Better both. <laughs> it's a boring answer, but it's the right one. I mean, yeah. everything you said is true. Right. Except to the point that our ability to read the future is zero. Yeah. So, you know, probably we're going to do better than the US over the next 10 years, but I'm still diversified across both. I've got a global ETF and then I've got local home bias because of Reg 28 compliant and the like. Um, I expect the SA Inc. and stuff to do better in the next decade because as we return to averages, but in the absence of seeing the future, I hedge myself by having bits of both. And in fact, we recorded the fat wallet today and there'll be a, a much bigger answer on Monday. Long, Long answer. Question in the front. So, okay. Um, I just wanted to applaud the gentleman who brought uh, his kids here. Mm. And yeah. I just want to tell those guys there that what your dad has just done is giving you a little bit of taste of wealth and because mm. I guess the wealth is like the mind, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, with, with myself, I have two kids already. And they are signed up with uh, Easy Equities. Uh, minor account, I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. So thanks to Easy Equities, that is why I invested in Easy Equities. Congrats to you. Um, yeah. Also, so I, I just wanted to answer to that gentleman who said, you know, don't don't get into debt. I would say get into debt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and why would I want to say that? I would say because you want to use that to buy assets. Only if you want to buy assets. But if you want to buy groceries, maybe not. Unless you're going to pay it yeah. off month end. Um, and thanks to the lady, between savings and investing, I guess you explained it very well. Thank you. To say, you know, keep something here for, for when something happens, right? And the other 50 for, for, for the near future, say 10 years plus. Um, yeah, so that's what I just wanted to share with everyone. So, yeah. So I think um, we're going to run out of time soon. Um, Sadie, I, I think it, oh, okay. oh, it's time to do can you talk to us about Back the Flag? Oh, um, so Easy Equities is running a campaign in support of this initiative called Giant Flag. Um, what this initiate, initiative is, is that it's going to, so pretty much they're going to plant desert, plant desert plants the size of 66 soccer fields. And you'll be able to see this uh, from space. So that's bigger than the flag that the Americans have on the moon. Um, and it's going to create jobs, bring through tourism. So it's going to stimulate the economy, especially in the Eastern Cape and in a town called Khafrinit. Um, and it's eco-friendly. Um, so what we're doing is we've got a bundle that we've made um, that if you purchase this bundle, you get to invest and that's your assets and stuff. But we're donating the asset management fees of that bundle to the Giant Flag Initiative. So... Yeah, it's a, it's a cool, it's a proudly South African thing, and what a good time to be backing the flag. So, um, your support would be amazing. And you can invest, but also invest in our country. Yeah. Our kids have to grow up here. We probably going to retire here, and we should build a really strong, solid economy. So yeah, it's the back the flag yeah. initiative.